Welcome to another Canadian Math Kangaroo contest sample video. This one will be for grade one, and we are going to be discussing word problems today. Word problems will appeal all over your math studies, and learning how to deal with them is a very good idea for solving math problems in the future. Our instructional objectives for any parents out there will be that we are going to practice solving some word problems, and we will try to identify the strategies that are going to be common to some of these problems that may not be your typical run-of-the-mill that you would see in the classroom. We will of course apply these strategies. So what are some strategies that I'm talking about? You always want to be reading a problem very carefully. You don't want to be messing anything up just because you misread the question or made it harder for yourself than you needed to. What is the question and what kind of answer will I expect? What kinds of units will I have? Uh, what is the question asking me to do? It's good to have expectations for what the answer will be, just to double check your work. What information have you been given? It's a good idea to highlight that information or underline it in some way to make yourself remember what's going on. This can include information about the rules that we might follow in a game or anything along those lines. What information do you still need to figure out, and how can you figure that information out, given what you've been given in the problem? Work carefully, step by step. Make sure you want to draw any pictures or draw up any tables, anything that will help you organize the information better. And of course, practice, practice, practice. Don't ever give up. The fun of the mathematics is in solving these problems trying to uh, work sometimes for minutes or hours until you finally reach a solution, like climbing a really high hill and seeing a beautiful venue up ahead. Remember that there are many ways to solve a problem, so it's actually not that hard to stumble on something that might work, as long as you keep practicing and follow the path along to the conclusions. Let's try something. Let's try question one. The jellyfish reproduces very quickly. Each day, the number of jellyfish will double. On the fifth day, the whole area was full of jellyfish. Tell me, on which day was the area half full? Was it on day one, day two, day three, day four, or day five? Take a minute now, try some numbers, try this problem, pause the video, have a solution, commit yourself to it, make sure you choose an actual option. It's like, fine, I have my final answer, and it is letter, number, whatever. Um, that way we'll know for sure what your solution would have been before we try and go through one together. Are you ready? Let's try solving. So what do we know? First of all, doubles might be an unfamiliar word to some of us. It just means that there will be twice as many jellyfish. So for example, if I start off with one jellyfish and it doubles on the next day, the following day, I will have two jellyfish. So if this is new information for you, you can still pause the video, solve along, and then come back. So if I start off with one jellyfish, on day two, I will have two jellyfish after it doubled. Then on day three, after it doubled again, I will have two plus two, four jellyfish, twice as many as the day before. Then another doubling will happen on day four. Four plus four, eight jellyfish. Another doubling will happen the next day on day five. Four plus four, plus four plus four, eight plus eight, 16 jellyfish all in all. So this is interesting because at any point, you know, I didn't, I didn't exactly specify what, when the jellyfish is going to double. I just consider this day by day, right? So on day five, the whole area is full of jellyfish, and we can now see that there were 16 jellyfish. When was the area half full? When did we have only half of what we had before? Well, we noticed right the day before. Right? If every day we have a doubling occurring, two times as many, then in order to figure out when things were half full, all we have to do is go back one day. It seems a little counterintuitive, but this is 
a process that mathematicians call exponentiation. The jellyfish will grow very, very quickly from here on out. So we don't have to know all that yet. We just know that if on day five, we have the whole jellyfish, you can see there on the slide, 16 jellyfish, half of that, or eight, will happen the day before. Good job if you chose Let's try another question. Put the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 in the circles so that the arrows always point from a smaller number to a bigger number. Pause the video now, draw this on a piece of paper, and put the numbers 1, 2, and 3, and 4 where they belong. Are you ready to solve together? Let's try. I'm thinking of this corner green circle right here. It has three arrows pointing away from it. And I know that either the number one, two, three, or four must be in that circle. Well, if an arrow points away from it, it points to a bigger number. If, I, if it's doing that to all three other numbers, this green circle must be the lowest number that we could have, the number one, right? because what the three arrows pointing away from it are saying is that all the other numbers are bigger than this number. Similarly, if I focus on the top left circle there, what is going to happen there is a four because there are three arrows pointing towards this circle. Now I have two numbers left to distribute. I have a circle that two arrows are pointing towards and one away, and I have a circle that two arrows are pointing away from and one towards. So I have a very important vertical arrow between those two numbers, two and three, so I know where to put the two at the bottom because it's smaller, pointing to the larger arrow, the three. Hopefully you had this solution worked out. Let's try another question. A tablecloth is made up of five squares which are red, white, or blue. All the squares are white except for three squares. All the squares are blue except for four squares. Tell me, how many squares are red? Is it one, two, three, four, or five? Again, don't trust your brain if your brain is saying, oh, I know this, I will just listen to the solution, it'll be easy. No, please pause the video, select an answer, commit yourself to an answer, make sure you're sure about it, and then unpause the video and listen to the solution. That's the best way to learn mathematics, to try and do it yourself first. Did you make some progress? Did you see some brilliant solutions? Let's see what I thought. Well, we have five squares. They are red, white, or blue. First, we are told that all the squares are white except for three squares. So that must mean that I have two white squares. The other three are not white. All the squares are white except for three. Then I'm told all the squares are blue except for four squares. That must mean I have a single blue square, one blue square, and the other four are not blue. All squares are blue except for four squares. How many squares are red? The squares can only be white, blue, or red, and we've colored in all the white and blue ones, so the rest are red. There's one and another one. Two red squares in total. Did you get that right? Let's try one more. Shania wants to write the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in the circles of this diagram. The numbers in the triangle are the sum of the numbers in the three circles around them. What is the number in the gray circle, top right there? So again, please pause the video and try and do what Shania is doing. 
try and put the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 into the circles so that the three numbers around 6 sum up to 6, the three numbers in the circles around 10 sum up to 10, and the three numbers in the circles around 12 sum up to 12. Did you do it? Did you pick an answer? Let's see what you got. First, I'm going to consider this pink triangle. What three numbers do I need that would sum up to six? It's the smallest of the sums, so it should not It should involve the three smallest numbers, and indeed it does. One plus two plus three would give me six. What about the largest sum of 12? What three numbers do I need to sum up to 12? Three plus four is seven, plus five is 12. So three plus four plus five need to go into that other triangle. Notice that the middle circle is involved in both of those. So we know straight away which number will go into the middle because it's the only number that appears in both the sum of one plus two plus three and the sum of three plus four plus five. Three is going to go into that blue circle right there. Then I need two numbers that together will make up 10 minus 3, right? Because I need a sum of 10 in the three circles around 10, but I know that there's a 3 up at the top. So what two numbers between 1, 2, 4, and 5 sum up to 7? The only two numbers are 2 and 5. I now know where the 2 goes, and I know where the 5 goes. This blue circle, well, we want to make 7, so we will put a 2 there. We will put a 5 there, and then we will put a 1 in the top left corner and a 4 in the top right corner circle or corner. Therefore, if you select a D, 4, you got the right answer. Good job. That's it for us today. Hope you had fun with some of these math problems, and I hope you find more math problems in the future that you also have fun with. If you have any questions, email info at mathkangaroocanada.com. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you in class one day. Bye!